Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I just finished reading Avengers Forever. This is a part of my read-along and book club with Steve Donahue and our special guest, Michael K. Vaughn. I'll leave links to their videos when they come up. And we're at the end of all of this insanity. This, <laughs> this comic book run it was just utter madness. After finishing it, though, I absolutely don't regret demanding and insisting that we read this. Steve was vocal that uh, we need to pick a different book. He said, he said, it's going to be completely incomprehensible. You're not going to understand this thing. And I just stomped my foot and said, no one's going to tell me what I can read, what I can't understand. <laughs> and said, we're, we're reading it. I bought, I bought this copy. Now, my overall thought to the whole thing, uh, I can't get away from the magnificent artwork. On ev every page, it's dynamic and exciting, just so masterful, um, just top level, best of the best, uh, e exactly what a comic book um, should aspire to be. Just incredible. The story is this um, time-traveling story. It involves um, multiple times and places. We're all over the universe. We're in the time stream. We're out of the time stream. There's different dimensions, uh, different iterations of characters from from the multiverse. And and it, it circles back. It's this uh, circular story. Uh, many of these characters are the same uh, figure, the same character uh, from different points in time, and they uh, run into themselves in the same timeline and have uh, interactions where their different life experiences, the amount of time that has passed, has created these uh, different personalities. So you have the same person with uh, completely different worldviews um, butting heads with, with each other. Um, examples are um, it's the Yellow Jacket and, and Giant Man. Of course, there's Kang the Conqueror and Mortis. Uh, and then other um, uh, amalgamations that I, I didn't really quite understand, like um, the Vision and the Human Torch and... Uh, I think Rick Jones became a Marvel Man, or whatever his name was. Look at this artwork. And for all the action, all the craziness, um, all, all the um, um, rich mining into the, the Marvel comic, uh, comic book world and all of its lore and... Um, story past, all these um, characters that have uh, rich uh, histories, lives of their own. I, I was so impressed with how, uh, how how richly some of these characters were developed, and especially uh, the so-called villains. So Amortis and Kang, uh, we get a rich background uh, we, we'll, we learn about their lives and their um, perspectives, which ultimately uh, inform our understanding of their motivation in this story. So uh, for the longest time, it seems like Mortis is um, this crazy supervillain, which I'm, obviously he is. He's, he's a time traveler. He's lived for centuries. It's the, the final incarnation of Kang the Conqueror. We, we learn that Kang the Conqueror, knowing his future, doesn't want to turn into a Mortis. But it seems like a Mortis wants to um, <clears throat> find Rick Jones and kill him. And we also see him destroying whole timelines. So whole whole worlds that live in different uh, universes. And he's, he's destroying them. And so the Avengers are trying to prevent a Mortis from killing Rick Jones, and then also uh, to stop him because he has like a, a time stone or something, a magical time stone, uh, to also stop him from 
destroying all of the universe. Well, we get these characters, um, the these time travelers, or um, I can't even remember what they're called, but um, they're like time lords, and they look like aliens. Sometimes they have uh, tentacles for arms, other times they have hands, and I thought they were really interesting characters, the, the timekeepers. So this is the, the timekeepers, and they're in this grand, opulent, um, galactic um, office space. And the timekeepers have given a certain amount of uh, power to Amortis. And what we learn is Amortis is actually trying to save the human race. Uh, the timekeepers believe that if um, humanity uh, becomes a um, galactic civilization, uh, if they don't stay earthbound, they will um, be the cause of the destruction of the universe. They'll, they'll just kill everything in their paths. Um, we get this great example of all of these um, larger-than-life, uh, huge godlike um, characters that humanity has defeated. There's Galactus, um, a celestial, and then something called uh, the Infinities. And so uh, the timekeepers are showing. Just look at how amazing that is. The timekeepers are showing all these examples of. Humanity's determination and how even though they seem, human beings seem small and frail and weak, um, when they put their mind to things, they can uh, topple down even the greatest gods. And so a as a result, uh, Kang, who should just be a simple villain, Amortis, who's a simple villain, uh, it all gets tangled up and you're left with incredibly dynamic characterizations. Um, I love these, these uh, timekeepers who are uh, kind of posing themselves as um, like godlike entities. Um, the curtain gets revealed and they're just other creatures and they have technology that allows themselves to uh, massively uh, influence or impact time itself. And there's a hilarious moment because it seems like it's like magic. These timekeepers can just change the ebb and flow of time. And uh, when they decide that they need to destroy um, uh, a whole section of timelines. It's like 42% of all the timelines that have ever existed, they're going to wipe them out of existence. And so it feels like that Old Testament God that can just um, crash reality with a, a single wave of the hand. Um, but they have something called a time cannon, and they need their time cannon, and they need their uh, special time crystal. And so it's it's kind of hilarious. Um, and there is practically like a court scene where the Avengers are brought in, Amortis is there. It is that, um, this scene that I just showed you. And the Avengers are trying to make a case for the value of human life. And the, these timekeepers um, are, are making their determination. They decide it's too dangerous. They, they already know the end of time. And so they're going to wipe out all of these timelines. And right when it seems like uh, all, <clears throat> all is lost, um, Rick Jones, Kang the Conqueror, and then, what is his name? Um, the Supreme Intelligence come bursting in on the scene on a space dune buggy. <laughs> so here they come crashing in. There's Rick Jones, Kang the Conqueror, and uh, 
the supreme intelligence. Um, and at this point, the story is revving up to have uh, the most epic grand finale fight sequence that um, you could that you could possibly uh, imagine. Um, eventually, all the versions of the disreputable, um, not so valiant versions of the Avengers are brought in into this. Um, uh, the the layer of the timekeepers on, on this uh, uh, planet or whatever it is um, to fight the Avengers. Look at this. And Rick Jones or somebody gets something called the uh, Destiny Force, which is this um, as ambiguous as it could be, it's some superpower that's uncontrollable, unreliable, but whenever it makes its appearance uh, he becomes one of the most super superheroes uh, but he, he can't control it at all so now they're battling look at all this in there that, there's that ridiculous space can uh, <laughs> uh, our little group our ragtag team of Avengers that have been plucked out of all these timelines they're the characters we've been following along this whole time uh, the core group of Avengers are now uh, in a situation where they have to battle against all a whole multiverse of um, other Avengers. And then Rick Jones gets the Destiny Force, and he's able to summon all of the other versions of the virtuous, the the just Avengers. Um, while all this is going on, the Timekeepers uh, get into an argument with a Mortis. He won't give them the special time stone, and so they kill him. You get a Mortis. And here's Kang. This is a Mort this is Kang in the future. And Kang says they killed him. Was that my death then? Did he just watch himself die? Is this the moment where he dies? Look at this. So here's all these Avengers. And it gets bigger and bigger and grander crazier just a whole whirlwind of action and spectacular um, visual treatments uh, trying to show all this amazing action and so now um, the avengers are trying to stop these timekeepers look at that uh, from setting off this time cannon all the while, there's little mini adventures going on. Look at look how amazing that is! So it's just the, the the biggest brawl of the century. The timekeepers are going to transform Kang the Conqueror back into a Mortis, and there's some of the most incredible visualizations of. A transformation, this metamorphosis. So there's Kang being transformed. Look at all. Look at how crazy this is. Oh my god. Um, and I want to show if I can find it. I already passed it. Oh yeah, I already passed it. Um, but Kang the Conqueror, through his own determination, look at that. So. In the middle of the transformation, he's able to ward it off and rips the transformation out of him, and he pops back up as Kang the Conqueror, not not a Mortis. Uh, they, the Avengers, save the day. <laughs> Look how crazy that is! And, um, amazing. Captain America crushes the time crystal, which is really important. And then there, there was like this flesh growing, <clears throat> growing around Kang the Conqueror. And when he bursts out, there's like a puddle of goo, which quickly uh, comes back to life and is a mortis again, but now a reborn a mortis. And so 
timeline between uh, the connection between Kang the Conqueror and Immortus have been severed, and so Kang can now um, go about and live his own future uh, without the risk of uh, becoming Immortus eventually. There's also the character Libra, who's another time-traveling character who um, is trying to find balance in the universe. That's his role. Um, So they save the day, Immortus vanishes, Kang the Conqueror vanishes, and then we start getting a series of, uh, it's an epilogue where all the characters are tra transported back to where they were before this whole crazy mess got started. And we see them being introduced back into their lives. Um, it's almost like a dream. They vaguely remember what had happened to them. Um, and then it ends with this, um, we have Rick Jones, who is, is now Marvel Man or whatever he is, um, but the destroyed time crystal, it turns out the big frog blob, uh, the supreme intelligence, was able to manifest the time crystal. And so it ends with this ominous note. There's that um, frog. And, and he now possesses uh, this m the most magical, powerful time crystal that um, was risking um, the universe itself, and they thought they had destroyed it. Uh, I also want to show there's variant cover art on the back, the very back pages. It's Kang the Conqueror, just magnificent. As far as kind of suspension of disbelief, uh, we're told that it's in, it was incredibly important. It was it was vital to the story that this select group of Avengers, which are all um, damaged in their own way, that uh, morose, sad sack Captain America, um, um, Ye Yellow Jacket, who was out of his mind, and characters that don't really know how to use their powers, they don't know each other, it's all kind of disbanded, and we're, we're told that it had to be them. And I don't really understand why that would be true, but you kind of have to go along with that. Also, so much of the action in this whole, uh, whole run uh, is hinged on uh, the principal characters, the, the Avengers that we're following along, and Rick Jones, not knowing what's going on, being as bewildered as the as the reader, or at least an inexperienced reader like me when it comes to comics. Um, and towards the end, when they finally kind of sit down, Amortis gives his um, um, perspective. K Kang gives his bit. The timekeepers talk for a while, and... I think it could have saved a lot of people a lot of trouble if they just started. Um, look at, look at, that's when those cowboys were there, the cowboy version of the Avengers with a dinosaur. That happened in this issue. That's by far one of the least absurd, crazy parts of the story. So, the Avengers saved the day. <laughs> Kang the Conqueror and Immortus, of course, um, are still out there in the world, um, ready to create future havoc. Um, it was great. I had a great time reading this. Um, really in, as inventive of a story as you could get, paired with Artwork to match, just the, the, the most uh, skillful, masterful, um, intelligent artwork, just brimming with confidence and energy, and inexhaustible. The the artwork, if anything, gets better throughout the series. So um, that's it for Avengers Forever. We're finally done with this insanity. Uh, if you've been following along and reading, um, 
Thank you for your patience. Uh, it's been great fun. Thank you, Steve. Uh, a big thank you to Michael K. Vaughn as well. Um, and we'll move on from here. So um, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like. And take care.